the next seven Caillou challenge is called Beginner Series Number Three, Sum of Numbers. Given two integers a and b, which can be positive or negative, find the sum of all the integers between and including them and return it. If the two numbers are equal, return either a or b. Note that a and b are not ordered, so you can't rely on a being the minimum and b being the maximum. They'll show you some sample inputs and outputs. Uh, notice 1, 0 returns 1, right? You would have the numbers 0 and the number 1. The sum of those is clearly 1. 1, 2 should return 3. 0, 1 should return 1 again. They're just reordered from the first example. Uh, 1 and 1 you might think would be 2, but remember they're the same number, so you're just going to return either one of them. And that makes sense. You can think of it as a collection of just one number, and the sum is that lone element. Then you have negative 1 and 0, which clearly returns negative 1. And negative 1 to 2 has all the numbers negative 1, 0, 1, 2. You sum those up, and you notice the 1's cancel out. 0 does nothing, and you have the 2, so your result is 2. Uh, go ahead and pause the video now. Give this one a try. If you get stuck or you finish up, come on back, and I'll get started. So I am going to use link for this one. I find it quite helpful for generating the range of numbers that we need for this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the system link library so I can use that. And now that I've done that, I'll be able to do something like enumerable range. And if you want to consult the Microsoft documents, you'll notice that enumerable range takes two integers. The first one's your starting value, and then it's how many consecutive numbers to count off after that. So we'll use that. In our case, though, we don't know which one's the minimum, right? That, that starting value, the first argument we pass, has to be the lower number. So let's do some work to get that. I'll make min and max variables. And we've seen that the math class has a min method. You can pass it to values, and it will give you the lower. So that's perfect for getting our minimum. And as you imagine, similarly, there's a math max that'll give you the larger of the two. So you don't have to do this, but it makes it a little easier to read, in my opinion. So now when I go into range and I pass my numbers, I can just say put min in, but you could have put math min and could have just pasted that in there. I like this a little bit better. I'll go min, and then I, you don't want to pass max in. You want to put the number of items that you need. So to get that, you would subtract min from max, and then add one, sort of uh, for counting purposes. So if that's not clear, think of this first example one zero, right? Um, max would be one, min would be zero. If I just did max minus min that would be one minus zero is one and so we'd have zero one and that would just make a collection with only the number zero and then when we sum that of course it's going to be zero which is the wrong answer we need one so you, there's actually two elements that are supposed to be in there that's max minus min plus one okay and then remember range just gives us a collection right that's not a sum we know that our method is a contract that is obligated to return an integer value representing the sum. So let's go ahead and use another handy link method, sum. If you'd like, you can go back to the Microsoft documents and look up sum. Uh, there it is. But it does what you would think. See under enumerable methods. Go ahead and read about that if you'd like. And I think this should do it. We'll go ahead and test. Uh, yeah. Yep, we got all green. We'll hit the larger test collection. Still green, good, we're ready to submit. So yeah, you'll probably see a lot of people 
condense this all to one line. Go ahead if you like that. Um, you didn't need to use link. I thought it, it's really nice here. It's really expressive. It's clear what it's doing. Um, take a range of numbers and then just add them all up. I mean, that's nice and nice and simple. So I'll go ahead and submit, collect my Caillou. We're a little bit slow today. Okay. And so they sort of used an absolute value to get the difference between the two numbers. That's that's fine too. They um That looks more like what I did, except, you know, this is a way you could see how to do it with the regular for loop instead of using link methods. That's fine. That's probably a way a lot of people chose to do that. That's closer to what I did where they just didn't make the local variables minimax. Anything else really unique in here? So yeah, go ahead and look through those. Uh, take from that what you need. You know where to find me with questions. Otherwise, we'll keep rolling. Thanks for watching.